Magic mushrooms. You might think of the 60s, dropping out, jumping out of windows thinking you can fly. You might think of going crazy. Quite the opposite of what magic mushrooms did to, to Ben and to Kirk. And despite its bad reputation, we need to ask the question, what does this mushroom know that we don't? What does it do that we can't? I'm a clinical psychologist at the Psychedelic Research Group at Imperial. It's a vibrant group of scientists and clinicians asking these very unconventional questions in a most conventional way. It is led by Robin Carhart Harris. He's a pioneering neuroscientist and also overseen by David Nutt, who is a world-renowned psychopharmacologist. And together they cut through ribbons and ribbons of red tape so that we could do the first psilocybin for depression study last year. And in the study, 20 individuals with treatment-resistant depression were given a high dose of psilocybin in a therapeutic setting. Now, the numbers may seem small, but the results were remarkable. We kept seeing these drops in their depression scores after the psilocybin treatment over and over again. Their symptoms of depression were going right down, much bigger reductions in depression scores than you would expect to see in trials of conventional treatments like antidepressants and talking therapy. The depression scores were going right down and they were staying down. Six months after the dose, six of them were still in remission, no symptoms of depression. Three of them didn't really respond to the drug, so there were small reductions in their depression, but only for about a week. But for 11, their depression was greatly reduced for about two months. And then the symptoms of depression started to creep back again. Now that might sound very disappointing, but with antidepressants, you have to take them every day, they have some unpleasant side effects, it takes weeks for them to work, and they are a palliative treatment, not a cure. But with psilocybin treatment, we were seeing immediate reductions in depression symptoms, immediate relief that lasts for months without side effects, and it seemed to be working on the root causes rather than just suppressing symptoms. Depression is a relentless, haunting affliction. Winston Churchill called it the black dog. Patients in our study called it a concrete coat, a sack over the head, a locked box, a prison. They had tried between three and 11 different types of talking therapy and up to, sorry, three and 11 types of antidepressants and six types of talking therapy, but nothing had released them. They were stuck in their individual prisons of depression and they're not the odd ones out. We are entering an epidemic of depression. It's the number one cause of disability globally and it will affect everyone in this room, either someone you care about or you directly. And we don't understand depression we don't really know what causes it, and despite enormous scientific endeavor, we have not yet found a, conclu a conclusive cure. We don't really understand it. It's, it's a complex mixture of so many different factors. And when it hits, it can be a wave of sadness, shame and grief, or it can be just a shroud that kills all feelings. And it's not a t an illness that we can just test for and treat. It's different for every person. So how to unlock depression? The key is never simple and it will be different for each person. So, in our study, we were originally looking at the effect of psilocybin on the patient's brains. So, it makes the brain go from rigid to flexible, hyperconnected. You could say that it unlocks the brain. So, in our study, we did these brain scans and we could see this increased flexibility and we also incre included a, a symptom measure so we could see that depression symptoms were going right down but that doesn't tell the full story we wanted to know from patients in their own words what was happening what was the psilocybin doing so we interviewed them all six months after the dose and we analyzed the interview tra transcripts and came up with two themes about what psilocybin was doing but before I get onto those themes, I think maybe I should clarify what a psychedelic experience is. So psychedelics allow the unconscious mind to become conscious. Important material that has been built up over the course of life, but that has been pushed out of sight where you can't see it, emerges. Like, it's kind of crumpled clothes that you push to the back of your wardrobe, and it emerges, it, it comes out. You don't just see it, you embody it. Memories, emotions, pain, love, grief, whatever has been hidden emerges and demands you feel it. It can be incredibly painful and incredibly beautiful.